So with the gears adjusted, pedals of course on, crank looking like we're getting, getting pretty close. Uh, now time to look at our brakes. Uh, what I'm going to do actually is, is remove the brake from its bracket here. I'll pull out one bolt and pull out the second bolt. So now that's, uh, that's free. Uh, this has been uh, bled. The brake is, is, has been bled. That's not our concern here. The rotor is fixed. This rotor position is, is locked. It's not going to move <laughs> around on us. We can adjust side to side our, uh, our uh, caliper body to some degree, but uh, we want to get the best position centered over it. Uh, so a procedure we're going to begin with, we're going to go over and grab uh, the brake department, the piston press. So the, uh, the piston press is just going to go in. It's going to widen up, force out those calipers just a little bit to their, their maximum uh, width. Uh, that's actually quite a bit wider than the rotor. Uh, it's going to come in once we start squeezing. Because it's floating here, I'm just going to place this on, on the rotor. Uh, again, we're not bolted down, and now we're going to squeeze our, our lever here. Let's see if we can watch what happens. Squeeze that around here. Feels loose, and then it, oh, it tightens up because the pistons have now traveled inward. Well, in a perfect world, they would travel the same on both sides, so it would make sense. Uh, to skip this technique, uh, but because uh, now uh, they've traveled in what is uh, natural for this caliper, we're now going to bolt this down and adjust to how the pist uh, pisi uh, pistons' natural positions sit, how the pistons like to sit. Uh, so again, not being perfect, there can be small asperities on the, the uh, cylinders inside, uh, so this, this will account for that. So no more squeezing until we get this on and, and, uh, and uh, give it a spin. Now, now we're looking um, down, and this can be difficult uh, to see at times. Uh, if you have a flashlight, it, it doesn't really help to shine from above. Uh, what can be quite useful, however, is trying to shine a light from below. So if I get white paper uh, and put a light down on the paper, uh, let's see if we can get a better view. We can look down and see the light gaps and that tells us the clearance. The hydraulic systems have a, a rather tight, tight clearance. So getting the white, a light, nice uh, bright light behind your background light, that's where you need to, uh, to see it. I definitely have a gap. Let's see if we hear some rubbing here. Oh yes, we're rubbing. And looking from above, the pad on the left side is rubbing. I need to move the whole, whole brake uh, to the outside here toward us slightly. First one. And then the other. Snug and then spin. Does not appear we have any rubbing. But if we do look at the background light, we can see very, very little light on the inside now. So we're going to try and split this small, small difference here. And this, of course, is where it is important to have our rotors. Oh, that looks very nice there. Our rotors very uh, straight and true. We are going to fully tighten uh, about seven to eight newtons on uh, newton meters on these bolts here. Uh, best with the torque wrench. Um, if things are out of alignment, uh, there is some repair possible. Uh, with the DT2 uh, tool to, to bend, but uh, fortunately it would look like we're, we're, uh, we're in good shape here. 
Now we can try and squeeze our rotor but with our pads and indeed it's a nice adjustment because again the pads were started in their natural position then we adjusted bolted down where they really wanted to be. So that would be, uh, be repeated on the, uh, on the front brake.